Okay, class, let me see the assignments I gave in the previous video. Who didn't do them, cannot watch the videos anymore, I'm going to ban you from... What am I saying? I cannot forbid you to watch the videos. This is YouTube. You can watch what I want to watch. So if you didn't do the assignments, well, uh, I cannot do anything about it. Anyways, I'm going to provide the solution again. This is from my head. I didn't pre-script it. I'm not looking in a second monitor and writing code off and explaining to you. I'm just going to do it right now. So over here in the enemy scripts, I'm going to create a new script that I'm going to call a spider shooter. Spider shooter pool because this one is using the pool technique and over here I'm going to deactivate this current spider shooter so simply deactivate this one and attach the pool one so there you go and let's go over here now the setup is going to be similar as what we did inside of the spider shooter so we're going to have all of these variables so we're going to have the bullet the spawn position the minimum shoot wait time and all of that so I'm simply going to copy all of that over here except over here we're going to have one more thing and that is a private list of game objects that I am going to call bullets and over here it's equal to the new list of game objects and there you go so what can we do first let me go back over here and I am going to attach everything that we have attached previously so the bullet and the spawn position that goes over here the bullet goes over here from assets not the player but the bullet there you go and now I am also going to hit this to override and apply this change to the prefab of the spider shooter that we have so the first thing that we need to do is create initial bullets. So we need to create initial bullets and you can have, for example, a variable for that. So we can have some like serialized field, private and initial bullets. That can be 20, for example, and that's not bullets, it's bullets. There you go. So initial bullets. And over here, we're going to create or void create initial bullets this is going to happen right away in the start or the wake doesn't matter so essentially what we are going to do here is we are going to say for int i which is equal to zero as long as i is less than the initial bullets i plus plus so basically how many of these bullets we want to create it can be you know 20 it can be 30 so these are the initial bullets and we are simply going to say here instantiation i'm going to say here game object new bullet is equal to instantiate and over here I'm going to pass the bullet or the spider bullet how I named it there you go next we are going to say new bullet so new bullet dot set active is equal to false so we're going to deactivate it right away and after that we are going to call the bullets list and I'm going to say add new bullet there you go this is going to add all of those bullets inside of the list and as I said this is going to happen inside of the awake it can happen in the start so create initial so here create asset main menu attribute what the hell is this I don't know anyways so this is going to create 20 bullets that we're going to deactivate right away and store inside of the list so now we need to create a function so over here I'm going to say void shoot simple like that so something that we did in the previous video and over here in the start again we're going to do the exact same thing so we can copy this code so the wait time we can copy it and over here we can copy it and going inside of the update we can say if our time dot time so time dot time is greater then our wait time so wait time then we are going to shoot but before that we're going to again reset the wait timer and then we're going to shoot what if i tell you that i have more tutorials with better explanations and a more comprehensive guide than this one that you're following Sounds interesting? Well, that's my Game Development Academy, and inside you have more than 80 courses, more than 500 hours of content for you to learn game development with Unity, Unreal Engine, and everything in between. So, click the link down below and check it out. Now, when it comes to shooting, we are going to do the following. We are going to say here again for int i, which is equal to zero, as long as i is less than the bullets dot count because this is a list and we are going to say i plus plus if you don't know what is a list it's basically like an array ex except it is expandable so arrays are fixed size basically meaning if we set the array to have 10 elements he can only have 10 elements not more and the list can have 10 elements then it can, it can ex expand to 12 15 20 30 gazillion that is a list and 
being that a list is same like an array, we can use a for loop to go through the list. So over here we can say if the bullets and the element that's at the i index is not active in hierarchy, but I'm going to do that with the exclamation mark. So I'm testing if the element is not active in the hierarchy, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the following bullets dot set active to be true. And then from there, I am going to say bullets dot transform that position is equal to the bullet spawn position dot position. And there you go. Now, since we have changed this, we do need to change over here deactivate. So instead of using destroy, we need to say over here game object. So game object set active is false because if we destroy it we cannot use it anymore but over here we need to say set active is equal to false and we are going to have a few problems that we are going to see in a moment that i am going to solve for you because i'm the best teacher in the world just kidding but anyways so if i also let me just do this i am going to make this a serialized field so that we can see that in the beginning i have created 20 bullets and placed them inside of this list and we are going to simply reuse them so let's go over here we will see that we have this bullets list as you can see it's empty if i hit the play button you will notice it has 20 items right away in it so now notice okay one bullet fired and there you go and now he's deactivated look at that so yeah Basically, what are we doing here? We have one issue. Notice over here. Look at that issue. All the bullets are basically, they are activated. Look at that. And the reason why they're activated is because over here, since when we find, you see, when we find a bullet, then we need to break out. That's the first thing. So we need to break out of the loop, you see? Because if we don't, then we're going to activate all of the bullets as you saw a moment ago and nothing was achieved. So we need to break out. That is one thing that I did. And don't worry, I will revise the code again. So I'm just checking if it works. So if I hit the play button. So now they are deactivated. Look at all of these. They are deactivated. And now we are shooting. So we are shooting the next one. We are shooting the next one and so on and so forth. But we have an issue. One of these is still active. Now the third one is still active. Look at that. So we have three bullets that are still active, but they need to be deactivated. The fourth bullet is still active, but he needs to be deactivated. What is going on over here? You can see, and essentially they're going to get to the point where all bullet bullets are active and we don't have any more bullets to shoot. The, the spider is still shooting, as you can see, but as you see where this is going, it will get to the point where all the bullets are simply active. And the reason for that is the following, because over here in the deactivate, the start function, we have the initialization functions. We have the awake, we have the start, and we have the on enable. On enable. Awake is called first, on enable is called second, and start is called third. And usually use awake and start to initialize to initialize your game, whatever that be. For example, over here, I use awake to create the bullets in the start to set the wait time and you get the point. But awake and start are not going to be called ever again, except if that game object is completely destroyed and then recreated from scratch. If we use set active to false, and then we use set active to true, the start function and the awake will not be called again, which means this right here is pointless. So what we need to do is we need to move this line of code here in on enable. So we need to move it in on enable because on enable is called every single time the game object is set to be deactivated and then set to be activated. So when it's deactivated and then when it's activated again, this on enable will be called. Also, what I am going to do over here is when we deactivate the game object, we are also going to do the following. I'm going to call a function that's going to cancel the invoke of this function. Now, the reason for that is because what if the bullet hits the player and this invoke was still not called? Because the invoke function will pause. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, for example, if the timer is three, which currently he is, what if we call the timer and he starts to count down three, then two, and he is at two and the bullet hits the player and we deactivate the bullet? When we activate the bullet again, this right here will continue from, 
from where it left off, from two. So it will be two and then one, and it will deactivate that bullet. So that's why we're using cancel invoke. And over here also in on disable, I'm going to use cancel invoke again. So over here on disable, we are going to cancel the invoke just in case that it was, you know, if the bullet was deactivated or what not. So there you go. This is how we can fix that problem. Of course, this is needed if, you know, when the player dies in this case, we are going to restart the game so you can omit this. But I just wanted to tell you or to show you that so that you know in case you use this method and you have issues in your own project and you know, no, don't know what is going on. Well, this is that issue. So it will continue the execution from where it left off when you activate and deactivate a game object. So if I go back now in the hierarchy, we will notice if I hit the play button, and how do I know these things? If you think that I have pre-scripted everything, no, because I do this a lot, you know, in my projects, in tutorials, and there we go. So notice now, look at these bullets. So they are being deactivated. And again, we basically only need three bullets. So we only need three bullets, maybe four, and there you go. So they are getting deactivated and so on and so forth. So yeah they reach up to here and they get deactivated. So let me just see where that is, somewhere around here. Come on, there you go. And he gets deactivated and he's ready to be reused. This way is much more efficient. Now, one thing that I would do is I would put all of these game objects, these bullets as a child of the, of the spider. So we can do that over here when we create a new game object. You see over here, we can do something like new bullet dot transform set parent and we can set that to the transform of the current game object holding the script, which is the spider. This is just for organization because now they will be spawned right below the spider. So if I hit the play button, you see they are spawned right below the spider. They don't clutter up in the hierarchy and there you go. This is not mandatory for the game itself depending on which platform we want to play it. So let me just break down the code over here, what I did. I'm going to remove this because we don't need it anymore. Basically, everything, the setup is the same, except that we have the list of bullets where we're going to store the bullets that we have created. This is how many initial bullets we want to create, and that's 20. And over here, we simply looped 20 times through this, you know, initial bullets. We created new bullets. We deactivated them. Over here, we also set the transform set parent to, you know, transform. There you go. And then from here, bullets, add new bullet, and there you go. So this is how we are storing these bullets inside of the list. So new bullet and add it to the list. When we want to shoot, we are looping through that bullet list. So we are looping through the list over here. And if the game object is not active, meaning we use this set active to false, then we're going to activate it and set his position. And there you go. That's all there is to it. And then, of course, break out of the loop because we don't want to spawn multiple bullets at once. Only one bullet per shoot. And all of this here, it is already explained that all of here, going back, we use on enable and on disable instead of using start because we know that when we use set active to false and then to true, the start function will not be called, which means the invoke will not be called and the game object or the bullet will not get deactivated, which we saw and eventually we will, we will run out of bullets and we will not be able to shoot. That's all there is to it. There you go. So if something is not clear when it clear clear when it comes to this pooling, also this can be done in a different way. So over here we can do it with a for each loop. So just that as an example. So we can say for each, and I can say over here game object bullet. So bull for bullet inside of our bullets. If the bullet, so if the bull dot active in hierarchy. So again, over here, if it's not active in the hierarchy, we can activate it. We can say bull dot set active to true. We can also say bull dot transform dot position is equal to the bullet spawn position dot position and we can break out of here. So what does this here mean? It's basically a for each loop. It's the same as a for loop, but this is used to process lists and so on and so forth. It works the same way. If I were to run the game, we will not going to notice absolutely anything because it's the exact same thing. And I will explain it if you never use it before. Look at that. So now we're going to shoot. There you go. One bullet, second bullet, third bullet, and voila, that's all there is to it. Now, basically over here, what we did is, 
So pay attention, this bool game object is looping through every bullet inside of the bullets. And in that iteration, it will be the element which is currently at that index. So if this is iteration zero, that means the bool will represent the object that's at index zero. If this iteration is one, then this bool will represent the game object who is at the one index. Then at two and three and so on and so forth. So same way as I over here is representing every index, for every, you know, loop count that we go, same way bool over here represents every game object in this list in that iteration. So if this is iteration 10, then the bool will represent the element that's at the 10th index. And there you go. If something is not clear when it comes to the pooling technique and if you did something similar, good job. This is how you learn by completing projects, by doing assignments, by so on and so forth. Anyways, that's all there is to it for this video. And uh, again, something's not clear, make sure you ask in the comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video.